Hey, Peter Beatty here. Today's video is all about a topic that you guys have been requesting from me in the comments. Uh, since this channel is pretty brand new, um, it kind of stemmed off from my Peter Beatty's Garage uh, car channel, right? And uh, I asked what you guys wanted to, you know, what kind of videos you want me to make. And a lot of people liked the video that I did on how I create software, create and sell software with no programming experience. And I asked what you guys wanted to learn next, and a lot of people said, how do you find developers? How do you find programmers? How do you find people to actually program your software? So let's cover that today. This is something that, you know, I'm gonna be totally honest with you, I've had trouble with in the past. It's something that uh, I've struggled with over the years, um, and I'm just kind of starting to get a grasp on it, okay? Um, so it can be really tricky to find good solid developers who not only do good work who are honest and you know can crank out high quality software you know on time and on budget it's extremely hard to find somebody that meets all those criteria all right so let's talk about you know my top three to four ways that i like to find developers and we'll talk about the pros and cons of each so the first one uh, are freelance sites okay so if you go online and go to freelancer.com or upwork.com. These are freelance marketplaces where freelancers, such as programmers, designers, writers, um, you know, 3D animators, engineers, you know, people that have skills go to outsource their skills, right? So if I know programming, I can go on there and say, hey, I'm a programmer, uh, and I can take on random jobs from people and get paid to do it. So as entrepreneurs or, or software creators, people who wanna create software, we wanna go there and find programmers. So if you go on there and you can start a project and say, hey, I'm looking to create a software that does this. I'm looking to create a software that, I don't know, tracks uh, visitors on a YouTube channel, right? And, and figures out how much a YouTube channel makes. I don't know, all right? You go there and you say, hey, I'm looking to make a software that does this. You create the UI, like I told you in um, the How I Create Software video. You get the, the, the user interface all mocked up. You go there and you start a job on freelancer.com. And you say, hey, I'm looking to create a software like this. Here's what I need to do. And uh, if you know what language it should be created in, then you put that there. If not, then you need to back up a little bit and figure out what language um, your software needs to be created in. And you can actually, uh, you know, just ask a programmer, hey, this is what I wanna create. What do you recommend um, this software be created in? Should it be created in PHP, Adobe Air, um, C++, you know, what do you recommend? So these sites are great, but the only problem is, is that most of the people on these sites are overseas developers, you know, from Pakistan, India, uh, things like that. Now these guys are usually good developers. The only problem is that there's a huge language barrier there. Oftentimes um, they don't fully understand the project or you don't fully understand um, what they're talking about because there's a language barrier. Uh, an upside is that these programmers are a lot cheaper than hiring someone like from the US or, or uh, you know, the UK or something like that. But these sites are great. I actually built my business on freelancer.com back when it was rentacoder.com. I hired my first a web designer from there, I hired my first programmer from there. So it's a great place to start if you're looking for developers. You just have to be careful about who you work with and, and, and communication is a little bit more difficult because you're talking with someone over the computer in a completely no other country and they don't speak the same uh, language as you. My second favorite way to find programmers is by tapping into local meetup groups. So I'm sure you guys have heard of the site called meetup.org. Uh, I think it's meetup.com, I can't remember if it's .com or .org. But did you know that there's people on there, groups of people that make plans to meet up together and talk about a certain topic, right? So there are actually groups of programmers who uh, have meetup groups on meetup.org and they have like monthly meetings or, or whatever, weekly meetings. Well, you can actually find these meetings and attend them. You can attend them in the form of someone who's looking to have a software created and uh, you can go there, um, meet some local programmers in your area, perhaps make friends with them, let them know what you're looking to have created. And it's just a great way to meet programmers in your area that you may not have uh, met otherwise. So uh, another way that you can find programmers is by just posting an ad on Craigslist. So I've done this before. 
um, you know, just a, a simple help wanted ad. Say, hey, I'm looking to hire someone to create a software like this. Uh, you need to have this experience. Um, you need to know how to do this, this, and this. And uh, you know, just put an ad on Craigslist that you're looking for somebody, and then just go through the process of you know taking applicants. Okay, so. This is something I've done a lot of in the past, but I kind of messed up a lot of times because I didn't put the applicants through um, an application process, basically. I just kind of trusted them on their word. I said, all right, this person, you know, I can um, trust my gut instinct. This person seems like a good programmer, so I'm gonna hire them. It looks like they do good work, so I'll hire them. So I've done that a couple of times and have got burnt big time. Uh, I actually hired a programmer, a local programmer from Craigslist once. You know, I didn't check any of his references. I just basically took his word for everything, gave him money up front. I know it's stupid, but that's what I did. I just wanted to get the project going. I kind of trusted him based on my gut instinct. And in the end, the guy ended up being a complete hack, a complete idiot who didn't know what he was doing and he couldn't even begin to create the software that I wanted and he ended up stealing some money from me. So if you do put an, a wanted ad on Craigslist or some of these other help wanted sites, you just have to know how to properly screen people and you know put them through an application process, check references, right? do your research. And it can be an intensive and time consuming process, which is why I prefer to use freelance sites because um, freelance sites, which is the option I just told you about a few minutes ago, the reason why I like it so much is because it's safe. All right, you can't really lose money if the programmer doesn't deliver, right? So, for example, if you go on to freelancer.com and say, hey, I want to create a software program that does this, all right, what's going to happen is, let's say you find a programmer. That programmer is going to request that you make uh, a down payment for him to start the work, right? It could be 25% or whatever. Well, that money doesn't go right to the programmer. It goes to freelancer.com and freelancer.com is in the middle and they act like an escrow account basically. They hold on to that money and until you approve the work and say yes, so and so programmer did the work I told him to do and uh, he's, he can now have that payment, okay? And then once you say click accept, release payment or whatever, the programmer then gets the money. So if the programmer doesn't deliver on his work, well, you get that money back. There's really no risk there. Some of the freelance sites out there, um, I know Odesk, which are now upwork.com, uh, they used to make it somewhat difficult to get your money back if someone didn't deliver. That actually happened to me before. I had to open a claim and it took several months to get my money back from a programmer who didn't deliver. So that's why I like to stick to freelancer.com. Their process of, you know, releasing funds and making sure you get your work and dispute process is much smoother um, than most of the other sites I've used. The last suggestion I have on how to find programmers is uh, probably one of my favorites and that's leveraging your existing network. So believe it or not, you have an existing network right now, right? If you have a Facebook account, <clears throat> you have friends on there, those friends have friends and those friends have friends, etc., etc., etc. Well, let me tell you right now, you underestimate the power of your existing network. Let me tell you, if you went on your Facebook friends list right now or you went on Facebook and just said, hey guys, <clears throat> I'm looking for a programmer who's really good at PHP. Um, let me know if you find anybody, right? Well, guess what's gonna happen? You're probably gonna find at least one person on your friends list who could possibly be a good candidate. If not, someone on your friends list may know somebody who's a good candidate, or they may know someone who knows someone who knows someone. So you underestimate the power of your existing network. Put a post out there on Facebook, send an email to all the people in your address book on Gmail, or message some of your friends or who are more tech savvy, who are into, uh, you know, in the marketing industry or in the software industry, right? Message those people and honestly, just associate with more successful, higher caliber people. Um, so this is how I found some really good programmers uh, in the past, just by asking my friends, saying, hey, um, I'm looking to hire a programmer in Adobe Air. I messaged all my friends who were in the same business as me. And uh, guess what? I ended up finding someone. I was looking for a designer a couple weeks back, and I didn't want to go through the process of finding one myself on freelancer.com. So I just posted, all, I messaged all my friends on Facebook, said, hey, I'm looking for a designer that does this. Can you recommend anyone? And then someone said, yes, I use this person all the time. They're great, go check them out. And they ended up being great. And the last suggestion for finding programmers is by just associating 
with people in the industry that you want to be in or associating with um, you know the caliber of person that you are looking to hire basically oh since I bought this car I started hanging around different types of people I started hanging out with uh, people who had other exotic cars other expensive cars all these people turned out being or most of these people turned out being really great people and guess what one of these guys ended up being a programmer and we're actually working together on a project right now and that never would have happened if I wasn't out there you know making new friends who are successful people and things like that so there you go just a few ways uh, a few of my favorite ways that um, I have used in the past to find programmers if you're just starting out I'd recommend honestly either starting a project on freelancer because you have that protection of the escrow if they don't deliver it but don't make the mistake of going into this any software project not knowing if the software can even be created in the first place go into the project knowing whether or not the software can be created or not because you may have an idea for something that can't even possibly be created so you need to know that first number two you need to know at least have an idea of what language the software should be created in what you know should it be Adobe Air should it be PHP C++ right what language should the software be cre be created in if you don't know well go on freelancer.com and hire a programmer as a consultant say hey I want to create this software program I'm looking for someone to go through it and tell me how it should be created and, and guess what that's not gonna cost you as much money to hire someone to tell you how something should be created versus trying to create something and then finding out later three months later that it can't actually be created after you've poured a lot of time into the project and par per possibly even released some funds to a programmer that's not even going to end up creating something that works so there you go just a few of my favorite ways on how to find programmers i hope this was helpful if not let me know uh, in the comments um, i usually if i miss something you guys let me know in the comments and i'll make a follow-up video so uh, this is peter Beatty. we make videos like this on a regular basis on business marketing success all that cool stuff so if you're into that kind of stuff and uh, you don't mind watching them as I'm driving the vehicle of the day down the road, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, let me know if you like this, and I'll see you in the next video.